Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Story. Let's go. <laughs> it is Upland. That is Deus. It's a it's a Belgian band. Oh, amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hello. Sagit. Hi, Connor. Curly. Nice to meet you. Nice Curly. to meet you. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, because yeah. there are like two Connors in yeah, the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so everybody calls you Curly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. then I'm going to call you Curly. Yeah, please. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, yeah I'm really good. Yeah, yeah. Good to be here. Um, I was unsure if we'd been here before, but I've been told that we have not been here before. So this yeah. is the first time? First time, this yeah. Oh, there are so many excited people to see you guys. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be great. Um, yeah, it's a very exciting prospect to kickstart festival season again, you know. It's nice to meet bands backstage and like, I don't know, it, it really like drives home the sense of community between musicians that feel festival season. So yeah. Cool. yeah, I can imagine, but also at the same time, Touring and a festival season—it's very intense. Yes. Um, it's very like how do you how do you stay sane? How do you prepare yourself for for the festival season, but also for the tour because you're in the middle of the tour as well. Um, what else are you saying? Just keep trying to read and keep trying to write music. I feel like that's the one thing that we found whenever we started touring that got to us the most is that we stopped creating, and then whenever your life is kind of based on repetition, then you end up. Um, Kind of despising what you're doing because you're constantly being a mirror of yourself rather than being the person who makes stuff you know mm -hmm. well that that really explains a lot because i was wondering like how do they keep releasing an album every year yeah, yeah, <laughs> every yeah. year you've been giving your fans a new a record mm -hmm. but that's because you guys are writing on the road yeah yeah well like just not even right like it's not even writing for the band uh, specifically it's just writing in general, just always kind of creating ideas, and then when it does come around to like us working on stuff, all of us kind of have like a, a kind of back catalogue of just little ideas. A lot of them are just like kind of 30 second mm -hmm. things, you know? And they're kind of like enough tinder to kind of like start a fire between the five of us of like stuff that kind of gets things going. But um, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna release an album next year, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, because you guys also do need a break. I was about to ask, like, do you yeah, guys ever yeah. take a break? <laughs> yeah, we do need a break for sure, yeah. I think after this, we'll, we'll probably take a break for a while and kind of readjust. I think um, the pandemic kind of helped us out in a little bit of a way, because it, it gave us that kind of break that we needed to kind of go separate uh, ways for a while, because um, we are five really good friends, but whenever you are constantly around each other, you, you find it very hard to come up with new things to say, you know, whenever you're you're sharing the same experience for so long, you know, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to uh, then bring something new to the situation, you know, and be like, oh, have you heard this? It's like, yeah, I've yes. heard that because I'm here as well, you know, so it's, like, it's just one of those, you know. I can imagine. You just said you also read a lot. What are you reading at the moment? Um, I'm reading a, a book of short stories by an Irish author called uh, Kevin Barry. Oh, okay. And it's a book called uh, That Old Country Music. And it's short stories kind of based around the west of Ireland around like the kind of uh, very rural, rural, uh, rural Ireland. And it's amazing, yeah, it's an amazing um, collection of short stories. Uh, the language that he uses is, uh, is absolutely beautiful. And from the limited time that I spent in that part of Ireland, the way he depicts it is absolutely perfect. And it's kind of nice, like being away from home to be able to kind of like suck yourself back into something that makes you feel um, present and um, kind of like um, connected to where you came from, you know? I mean, it kind of like connects with the, the, the theme of the album, right? Yeah, the theme of yeah, the album yeah, is about guilt yeah, yeah. of leaving your your home and, and the hurt that it can bring you. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not really guilt, it's just kind of like, I feel like um, there's a long line of um, Irish people moving to England to, to work, you know, because there was no work in Ireland and all this kind of stuff. And that wasn't necessarily our case, but I think whenever we did move over, it was kind of at the end of a period of our lives where we had you know, been college students and like tried to make it in music and like finally got like, you know, signed with a label. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, it just seemed like the natural ending of a chapter to, to, to then move away from Dublin. Really, why? I don't know, I just feel like we'd, ex we'd experienced it as like, you know, as students and as, as friends and like kind of um, aspiring musicians. And then once we'd kind of landed at the point where we were musicians, it kind of seemed reductive to kind of stay there and, you know, keep going, like keep trying to be inspired by the same streets and the same, like the same pubs and like the same chat everywhere. So it just seemed like moving. And also like in this job, even though you do get to travel a lot, 
it does kind of ground you a lot and like a lot of our friends are like moving to like Australia and America and all this kind of stuff we were kind of finding ourselves in our mid 20s and we were like we should we should move something we should experience something else mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah so that's that's kind of how it ended up happening and it kind of helped with this new record right yeah yeah no yeah. exactly yeah and uh, I don't know I think it kind of proved how malleable we can be mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, drawing inspiration from the place that we were in, so yeah, um, yeah no, it was yeah. Good. I was reading this incredible interview that Enemy did with you guys about mm. the, the new record, and then I don't remember who it was, but one of your mates said that you want to basically you don't want to sound like Dog World anymore. You mm -hmm. want to throw away the sound almost. Yeah. And I was wondering what what do you how would you describe the Dog World sound, and why was it time for you guys to just you know. Um, I think the Dog Girl sound was just kind of born out of like uh, trying to write songs. So like, whenever you're playing like a hundred cap rooms, mm -hmm. and you're trying to grab people's attention, or you're trying to write music that was very immediate and um, songs that would be uh, quite quick to the point, and that people could walk away with like, say, if we played ten songs or every single song that they could walk away being like, there was this point to this song, this point to this song, blah blah blah. But then. And we were quite limited as musicians then as well. And then just from touring and playing more, we kind of found ourselves uh, develop more taste and develop more abilities to kind of like spread the musical palette. Mm -hmm. and it, it's not necessarily throwing away that, but it's just trying to kind of broaden broaden the, the entire spectrum of things that we want to do. And I, I think like in this day and age and the way that music is, the way that people consume music is that they appreciate that, you know, they appreciate it. Um, uh, musicians who are trying to broaden instead of just like reintroduce um, similar feelings to them over and over again. You know? Yeah, but you also need balls to change, right? You need what? You yeah. need the balls to change. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because yeah. you know how fans can be. Like they can yeah, be very yeah, receptive, yeah. or they can be like very brutal. As well, well, we had that with the second album. Like we, well, we thought we were kind of a little bit uh, like scared of how people would take it if they would just want us to do the same thing, that, and or if they would let us. Um, develop and honestly the reaction to that is that all the fans were like really into uh, what we were trying to do and I feel like since then it's like it's almost expected of us now to kind of like turn a turn a page mm. after every album which is like honestly could not be in a better position than that like so yeah good. yeah um, it's very exciting to be able to like play shows with a new set list because the new album is out yeah what is your favorite song to play live uh, from the new album um, yeah, so we kind of like we were just on tour in America and we kind of learned all the <laughs> learned on all the songs as we were going. Yeah. But uh, I honestly think Big Shot is one of my favorite like favorites to play live now. I think it's just the beat of it is quite different to anything that we have, and um, I think how noisy it is and how like full force it is it's just become like a really enjoyable thing to play. Like you know. So we will be hearing that song tonight as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And yeah. then last last question, since you were talking about taking risks and experimenting with new sounds. Which song on the record um, scared you a little bit? That you were like, oh my gosh, I don't know what this is going to do. Um, I think like a song that scared me to like transition into live was the first track uh, in our Griha mm. with Joe. So it's like like a six minute song or a little bit over six minutes and it's like me and Digo singing back and vocals for that long. And singing the same thing over and over again as like a mantra. And um, the hardest thing about that is is that I generally I guess sing back and vocals, but like not that often. But having to say, sing the same thing over and over again is like if you sing it worse <laughs> than the <laughs> time before, I feel like people notice more than if you were singing different things like after each other. So um, yeah, that was the scariest thing. But uh, we got over that now, and I, I enjoy playing that. So we'll do we'll do that song live tonight as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, Curly, thank you so much for your yeah, time no, no and problem, enjoy man. your thank set you. tonight. Yeah, 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 I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>